Hi everyone and welcome to Dennis Deep Cuts, the 60th installment of this fine YouTube series. Today we're going to talk about Steve Albini. Let's see what happens. Musician, producer, uh, most notably an engineer. Uh, Steve Albini was an incredibly talented man uh, who passed away about two weeks ago at the age of 61, which is nothing, uh, of a heart attack. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about him or specifically about some of the music that he helped create or he helped define. Um, first, I want to say something about the, the sad state of affairs when every day when I open up my social media accounts, there's another obituary for another fallen comrade. Um, it is, of course, beautiful that we pay tribute to those that has, you know, has come to the end of the road, so to speak. But um, a radical idea would maybe to be to support these people while they are still alive. Um, we're coming to that time where a lot of rock and rollers or a lot of punk rockers are getting to the age where they're starting to pass away. And um, maybe it would suit us and them better that we told them how much we love them and how much their music meant to us while they are still alive. The record industry is horrible, cold, unforgiving. I disregard, uh, discard people left and right. Just, you know, you're not cool enough, you're not young enough, your records aren't selling, etc., etc. And uh, a lot of musicians could sort of just fade into obscurity until the day they die and then we celebrate them. So, you know, why not take the time to check out what your favorite artists are doing at the moment and maybe check out their last couple of records because we sure as hell haven't. <laughs> So uh, that's just a radical thought, a radical idea. Like, let's celebrate people while they're still alive. Let's give them the love that they serve while they are still alive. I'm sure that Steve Albini would have appreciated uh, the outpour of, of uh, celebration that he got when he passed away. Maybe he wouldn't. He, he's kind of a surly man, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, so Steve Albini. First of all, he was a musician. He played in some fantastic bands, like uh, Rape Man, maybe not a name for a band uh, today. Big Black, and uh, for the last 20 plus years, Shellac, that actually put out a record last week, which is kind of wild, and I need to check that out. Um, he got into art, he did zines, and he did artwork for records, such as uh, Naked Reagan and stuff like that. Came out of the punk scene and then he became a record engineer and producer and he was one of those it is wild that a recording engineer has gained such notoriety um he produced records but he was mostly just a guy that's like i just want your records to sound great come to me i'll record them and they're gonna sound as great as possible um he had quite the the span like you know, a lot of the stuff that he did was uh, heavy alternative uh, guitar music. But I mean, he was also the dude that worked with Queer Punk's Pants Division and then, you know, recorded all the Jesus Lizard records. And then he did a record with Robert Plant and Jimmy Page. And, and he recorded the pop punk band the Screeching Weasel and so on and so forth. So his, his span was quite big and he put out some really fantastic music. Uh, I'm not going to dive too much into his life personal life. Um, I'm gonna bust out 10 records that he engineered or produced or were a part of. None of his uh, own bands and none of the big bands. You know, like like we all know that he did In Utero with Nirvana. We all know that he did PJ Harvey and the Pixies and so on and so forth. But um, per usual, I'm gonna dig into some of the more uh, unknown Steve Albini engineered production albums. Um, so that's what we're going to do today to honor his uh, life and legacy and the music that he helped to create. So let's do it. The first record I want to talk about is uh, the debut album from Flower. Flower was a solo project by a guy called Pete Conway out of uh, Minneapolis. He was in a really cool band called uh, Rifle Sports like a post-punk punk band. 
that put out their debut and one and only album on Reflex Records that put out some of the early Husker Du stuff. Uh, anyway, he put out four records and then the Monica Flower and uh, Steve Albini recorded the first two ones. And this is from 1988, so it's an early recording in Steve Albini's career. Um, the record is very much like that guitar, noisy guitar rock of the late 80s. Uh, the main difference is that uh, there's only a live drummer on a couple of tracks, so there's Drum Machine, which gives it a mechanical kind of cool vibe to it. Uh, it's a pretty good record, it's not fantastic, but it's an important record in Steve Albini's career because uh, he was the touring bass player for the Flower Band, Flower, Flower, <laughs> Flowers Band, and uh, Todd Trainer was the drummer, and Todd Trainer also played in the Rifle Sports together with uh, Pete Conway. And Todd Trainer and uh, Steve Albini then went on to form the band Shellac. So, yeah, it's an important record in his uh, discography, I would say. So, one of the best Swedish rock and roll bands of all time is a band called the Union Carbide Production. They were like a weird you know 80s version of the stooges kind of that that wild rock and roll style uh they put up four records on the fourth record swing they went to record with steve albini uh they were banned from 1986 to 1993 in 1992 they went to the states to record this with steve albini um unique carbide is a fantastic band all of the records pretty great unfortunately this is the weakest one um the record label really wanted them to record with Steve Albini, but the band was almost, you know, in the throes of breaking up. So uh, the record's it's okay. If you want to check out Union Carbide, check out uh, the first two records. They're phenomenal. Some of the best uh, rock and roll music to ever come out of Sweden or to ever come out, period. Um, swing is fine. Um, for a band that has a song called High Speed Energy, it doesn't really feel like that. The production feels a bit more subdued and uh, I mean it sounds crisp and clean, but it has, doesn't have the energy of the first couple of records. But I wanted to include it because it's a, a fucking phenomenal Swedish band that recorded a record with Steve Albini. And um, a couple of these guys then went on to form a band called The Soundtrack of Our Lives. And they were one of those bands I could have included on the list of uh, bands that became other bands. Um, but yeah, check out Union Carbide. Maybe not start with Swing. Swing is the last record you check out with Union Carbide. But see what being a producer with Swing. Hey, it's okay. So yeah, that Union Carbide production album, maybe not a 5 out of 5 record. It's pretty cool. But this one... Definitely five out of five records. Uh, Dirty Three from Melbourne, Australia, their fourth album, Ocean Songs from 1998. They put out five more records since, and uh, they are fantastic. Instrumental, sweeping, beautiful, haunting, just this wonderful record. Um, Dirty Three is, of course, uh, Warren Ellis. That uh, in the last 20 years has been Nick Cave's. Uh, writing partner in the Bad Seeds and for the movie scores and uh, the other guys from the band they came from bands like uh, some of my favorite Oz bands like the Moodists or Venom P. Stinger um, this record is fantastic the production is great and it does sound like a band just playing these hauntingly beautiful songs live in a live setting and um, yeah this is definitely a 5 out of 5 record and if you're gonna Unlike Union Carbide, if you're going to dig into Dirty Three, excellent starting point. So the next project is a project called Pig Face, with their debut album Gub from 1991. Pig Face is, in effect, uh, Martin Atkins from uh, is a drum for Public Image Limited and Killing Joke. And um, he was also the touring drummer of Ministry. And uh, the, the other drummer of Ministry, uh, William Riefner, they liked to do a double drum attack, so they started Pig Face. Uh, and then William left after this first album. But um, it's one of those super cool records where you can hear it's two drummers that started a band together. It's very 
tribal, very rhythmical, very industrial. Um, it has some cool guest appearances from people like Trent Reznor and uh, David Yao from Jesus Lizards is uh, appearing on a couple of tracks. And then Steve Albini is playing guitar on some songs and he's doing accelerators on a couple of tracks and he recorded the whole ordeal. And it's a super cool record. I cannot recommend enough if you're into wild noise industrial music. Uh, Pig Face, Martin Atkins then went on to do another five albums. And um, if you look at the Wikipedia page of Pig Face, <clears throat> Anyone who's ever done like weird alternative music has been a part of the Pig Face project. It's, I mean, it's little who's who of uh, alternative music. But this record is phenomenal. It sounds great. Super, a lot of drums. I love drums. So it's a cool record. So the next band uh, I want to talk about, I talked about them a little bit on the episode uh, called English is not the only music. I'm talking about my wonderful friends in the uh, Chinese post-punk band uh, PK14 from Beijing. This is their fifth album, um, 1984, that was released in 2013. They have two more records out after this. Uh, PK14, um, they were the first punk band ever from China, which is a wild thing to be. Even though the music uh, of the last couple of records more like noisy guitar rock mixed with like propulsive sort of uh, Gang of Four-esque post-punk. Wonderful band. Uh, they went to Chicago for four days to record with Steve Albini, engineer, and the record sounds amazing. It is produced by a friend of mine called Henrik Oya from Umeå. Uh, but yeah, this is a beautiful album. They get two more records out after this. And uh, if you want to check out some of the propulsive post-punk with some trippy Chinese vocals on top, check out PK14. They're, they're wonderful. There's no secret that Born Against is one of my favorite hardcore bands of all time. So what happens when Sam McFeeters and Books from Born Against and Men's Recover Projects and many other bands get together with Andy from Skull Control and Mono Rocket and put out this fantastic hardcore album, Wrangler Brutes, Zulu from 2004. They put out one demo tape before this and then they put out this one album. I think there's like a seven inch, uh, well, Steve will be in recorded and produced it. It sounds insanely good and it's like a, uh, it's such a good hardcore record. It's one of those records that I wish more people knew about and more people talked about because this is just fantastic. Uh, they only put out this one record and then they broke up. Um, Sam McFeeters went on to become an author and put out some really cool books. Mutants is a great book. And then Brooks became, uh, he uh, runs Superiority Burger in New York, which is one of my favorite go-to vegan spots when I'm in New York, so good for them. But uh, Wrangle Boots, one of those bands I wish they would have done more music. Yeah, this is just a fantastic hardcore record. I did an episode a while back about uh, No More Cock Rock, and here's one of the records and albums that I talked about. It's the band Oot from New York, their third and final album, Griller. It's still being recorded and produced, and it sounds great. Uh, they were part of, they started in the late 70s, part of like no wave noise rock experimental scene, and uh, that's kind of what it is. But check out that episode for more about this band. But this is a really, really cool record. The next album I want to show you is uh, The Wedding Presents third album, Sea Monster from 1991. Wedding Presents starting Leeds. 1986 by Dave Gedge, who is like the only constant member. They're part of like the C86 uh, jingle jangle pop movement. But on this third record, they collided with Steve Albini, and this is like it's so loud, and there's so much guitars on it. But it blends perfectly in with sort of the the sad, uh, you know, the sad songwriting of of the wedding present. This is a phenomenal record. It's so loud and it's at the same time, it has this sensitive touch to it. Um, yeah, you should check it out. 
this is just like uh, one of those five out of five records that maybe not that many people know about. Just so loud, such a loud record. It's fantastic. One of my favorite bands that I've talked about a couple of times on this show is, of course, the Manic Street Preachers. And uh, on their ninth album, Journal of a Plague Lovers, they went to record this record with Steve Albini. Manic Street Preachers started in, started in Wales in the 80s. And um, in 1994, after the third brilliant record, the Holy Bible, um, a lyricist and uh, sort of brains behind the operation, uh, Rich Edward disappeared. And um, many years later, they decided that they were gonna use some of his lyrics and unfinished poems uh, to create some new music too. And uh, they figured that they wanted a record that sounded a bit like Holy Bible, that angular sort of harsh sound that they had on that record. So they went to Steve Albini and they put out this record and it's a pretty fantastic record. Um, the lyrics feel very fragmented, of course, because they're not really done lyrics. It's more like pieces of, of writing that they, they put together. Um, but this is a great record. It sounds great. It has a really like rough edges to it, which I think they wanted. Because um, a couple of records they put out, they're really huge and swelling and orchestral and really arena rocky. And this is uh, one of the most punk rock sounding records. Uh, one of these days, I want to do one of those Manic Street Preachers from best to worst. If you would be interested in me talking about that, I would like to do that, that'd be kind of cool. The last record I want to show you um, is a record that I actually did present a little bit on my episode about the shape of jazz to come when I had my good friend Mats Gustafsson here and we talked about record collecting and jazz music and so on and so forth and you should check out that episode because it was pretty awesome. Uh, he gave me a copy of Fire's latest record, um, Testament, recorded with Civil Beanie two years ago. <clears throat> this just came out and uh, Fire is a free jazz improvisational uh, trio. Fantastic. They've been together since 2009 and this is their eighth album. Um, and this is great. And they went to Steve Albini to record and it sounds wonderful. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you a record from 2024 that, I mean, I probably got released around the same time as, as Steve Albini passed away. Um, it's a great record, you should check it out, Fire, and also everything that he does, uh, Fire Orchestra. Uh, it's like a, a massive band where David from Refused is uh, playing drums and singing. And then, of course, we do the band Backing Villain together, which hopefully put out a record this year. Uh, but yeah, 10 Steve Albini records, maybe not his most well-known albums, but some real bangers. Um, they all sound great, and um, yeah. A tribute to you here as well they're still alive let them know that you care let them know that you love their music it means a lot to them to us um, until next time stay well my friends bye bye